Hi, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art stripper, and I'm going to show you nine techniques for acrylic that are non-traditional that I think every beginner needs to know. The first thing is, is that you've got to bunch them together correctly. Now, Q-tips can be nice and tight like this, but they can also be fuzzy like this, and that makes them not usable. To prevent that, you want to dip them before in water before you bunch them and twirl them in the direction of the spin of the Q-tip. Collect together three and using a small rubber rubber band, bunch them together as so. That is a Q-tip bundle. You can do these in three and five and larger to get some great effects. Using a stipple with dry or heavy bodied paint, you'll want to dip the little bunch, just the tip in water, tap up and down into the heavy body paint, and then come over to do the stamping technique. If you are using craft paint or fluid paint, I like to combine a couple colors. You don't have to get the Q-tips wet ahead of time because the paint is so wet. That is a Q-tip stipple. The next non-traditional art technique I think every beginner needs to know is the sponge dab. This is great for leaves and clouds and flowers and a variety of things. You take a craft sponge, tapping it up and down into paint, and then you do the same on your canvas, and it will make this nice dispersed uneven technique that can be a variety of natural objects. The next technique that I think that you need to do for these types of non-traditional techniques is to have a few core techniques to go with them. So I'm gonna show you a basic grass stroke. You're going to take a round brush with a nice point, get it wet, load it up into your paint. Notice that I'm turning the brush over to load the brush. On the toe, you're going to come here, pressing very lightly, you're going to firmly Lick a stroke out, make some light, some short. We don't want to mow the grass too early. Now you can take some of these plants and put them into an environment. Another thing when using non-traditional techniques is that you're going to want to have some line control so that you can pull things together. Getting line control for branches, for twigs, for stems is about practicing light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure, heavy pressure. You're going to want to practice making fine lines and thicker lines with the brush that you're using. This is necessary for all artists to get used to their tools. To finish out your traditional techniques that match well with non-traditional, I'm going to show you a basic leaf stroke. I'm going to add white just to reveal what's going on with the stroke. To do a leaf, you're going to take your round brush. You're going to begin the stroke light, press firm, and then curve out. It's like making a little comma. It's good to practice with the tools you have to you master that little curve stroke. Another great non-traditional technique that every beginner should know is the dry sponge. It lets you do wood, stone, all kinds of rough textures. I'm going to load up with green again, just so you can see it. And I'm going to pull the sponge across the surface, but not pressing very hard, letting it skip. If you press hard, you lose the dry stroke. So you'll want to be able to press lightly to keep that stroke. Another important thing to be able to do to tie things together is dry brushing. Now I'm gonna take my brush, I've pulled all the moisture out of it. I'm gonna get some paint, adding no extra water. And then I'm gonna come here going over the top, letting the brush skip the surface where it doesn't paint all of the canvas. This is a basic dry brushing. A great non-traditional technique, one we're gonna use a lot this week is the tape resist. Tape help gives you straight line, but tape can also mask out areas so that if you wanna create a pattern or texture, or in the case of this week, trees, it can help you do that. 
The first thing is, is to put out your tape and then burnish down with your finger. If you don't burnish down, the paint will go under the tape. Then you can take your color that you're going to paint on there and we'll just use our white. Allow that to dry and then you can remove it. And remember, tape has to go on to dry paint as well. I like to remove the tape the opposite direction that I placed it down on. But you can see that gives us a nice resist. Now for beginners, I think sometimes it's nice to start with a light color like a white. And I'm going to use a soft brush like an oval mop. And I'm going to pull this out. Paint blends best when it's still wet. So I'll take some of my blue, add it into my brush. Come here and blend that wet into wet. And that's how you would get that blending. That was a lot of fun to share with you non-traditional acrylic techniques that you can use to make great paintings. I think every beginner needs to know these. I can't wait to show you how you can use these all week to make gorgeous paintings. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.